Hello, my name is Mike Rayner, and this video is about how to install Xubuntu 14.04 32-bit desktop into VirtualBox. Now with so many people looking for a replacement for XP, Xubuntu would be one choice that does not require as many resources as a 3D desktop like Linux Mint or Ubuntu. The outcomes for this video would be to download Exobuntu 14.04 32-bit desktop, create a virtual guest for Exobuntu, install Exobuntu 14.04 into the virtual guest, update Exobuntu, and then install VirtualBox guest additions into Exobuntu. So you could try it out before deciding whether you want to use this as your replacement for XP or not. Requirements would be an internet connection, a host computer with administrative privileges, and an additional 20 gigabytes of storage and 1 gigabyte of random access memory. And you can check on the Exubuntu site for lesser options. I find it'll run fine with 512 megabytes of memory. Additional info would be found at the Exubuntu homepage and you can find additional info about the system requirements at that page. While I have researched this material, I can't fully verify that it will work with all combinations of hardware and software out there. So I've included a disclaimer. If you wish, you can stop the video and read a disclaimer. This is the exubuntu.org homepage. You can take a look at the system requirements for exubuntu. It says recommended system resources, one gigabyte of memory to run uh, multiple applications on your desktop and 20 gigabytes of free space. Minimums up here if you want to deal with the minimums. So once I have that information, I'm going to download it. And I'm going to download this 32-bit system. And I'm going to save file, Exubuntu 14.04. But I don't have torrent on my uh, computer, so I'm going to have to go up to the United States down here and I'm going to have to get the PC Intel x86 desktop image. Save the file. It's an ISO file, so... And I put it in a computer local disk download Xubuntu folder, someplace where I can find it. Click Save. And if you look here, it says about 22 minutes for it to download. And I'll come back when it's uh, fully downloaded. Okay, here we have just a few seconds till the install is finished. It's downloaded, and if I want to check it, I would simply go to C Downloads Xubuntu, and there it is. Next step will be to create a virtual machine for this ISO file. Notice I have both the 64 bit and the 32-bit. I386 is the 32-bit ISO file. I have downloaded the 64-bit previously. Here I am in the Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager and what I'm going to do is create a new virtual machine to install Xubuntu in. To do that I simply go up here click on New and I'm just simply going to call it X, Xubuntu Trusty Tar 01. And so Linux. And here it says Ubuntu 64 bit, but I have downloaded the 32 bit, and that's what I'm going to use. Doesn't really have one for X Ubuntu, but that's, that would be uh, the Ubuntu choice of all of these choices, would be the one to use. Click Next. And if you recall from the uh, specifications that it recommended 1024, though it would run with 512 megabytes. So I'm going to put in 1024. Click Next. And it's going to create a virtual hard drive now. Click Create. Next. And I'm going to dynamically allocate it. That means the space is only used up as much as files are installed so that my hard disk does not fill up as quickly the hard disk on the host machine. Click Next. And instead of 8 gigabytes, if you recall, it says 20 gigabytes is a 
recommended for I usually put at least 20 gigabytes on one of my virtual machines and finally just click create now here it dumped it into a uh, Exubuntu into a Kali Linux folder but I'm going to drag it down here or a group I'm going to close the Kali Linux and then I'm going to actually create a new group here group and then go down here and uh, I should have rename group and I'm going to call X Ubuntu and then just leave that there probably should hit return now I'm going to select it make sure it's highlighted Go over to System, Processor. Well, one thing I like to do is I enable IO APIC. That basically allows you to shut it down sometimes if it hangs up without losing your data. It's a possibility here. And then on Processor, make sure it is enable PAENX is enabled. And it is. Click OK. And if you want to, you can give it a little more video memory, but actually that really doesn't come into play so much here with Xubuntu. If you had a Ubuntu version, you would enable 3D acceleration, but for Xubuntu, leave that unchecked. The thing with the video memory is that if this is only 12 megabytes, it'll use the regular memory from 1024. If you have 128 megabytes here, that takes it from the 1024, so you can give it to video memory and see if that works or leave it like this and see if that works, whatever your preference is. I'm going to click OK. Finally, at storage, what I'm going to have to do is take your empty CD, DVD, and I'm going to have to point it towards that ISO file that I downloaded. So I'm in the downloads directory. Scroll down here to Xubuntu, and there it is. That's the 32-bit one that was just downloaded on 5.2. Click Open. So that has to be there when you start up. Click OK. And that's it for this section. Next section, we'll do the actual install. Now in this section, I'm going to install an operating system into this guest virtual machine. Right click, start, up comes the uh, Exubuntu TT01 running. And here we have Exubuntu 14.04. So up comes the install screen, very simple, just click install Exubuntu, and it says for best results, please ensure this computer has 5.7 gigabytes available, is connected to the internet. I always prefer to have desktops attached to the internet when doing the install of Ubuntu version, have it download updates while installing, and also install third party software, and click continue. Finally, after about two, two and a half minutes, you get a set of choices. And it says the computer currently has no detected operating systems. And I'm going to erase the disk and install Xubuntu. Well, actually, let's, let's go with uh, use the logical volume manager with a new Xubuntu installation. This allows easier taking of snapshots and easier partition resizing. Click install now. Now it asks for your local time. I'm in the Eastern Standard Time in the United States, so I'm just going to click continue. And now it asks for a keyboard layout. Now, if you detect keyboard layout, that takes quite a bit of time, so, but I know my keyboard layout, which is English US, and that's different from English UK. 
and then over here is English US again and click continue after you have the correct keyboard layout for your locale put in a username and if I recall right it was Xubuntu I this should be in lowercase TT01 Mike and Unfortunately, I use a weak password because I have several hundred virtual machines. But a strong password should include a number, capital and lowercase letters, and then some special characters like pound or at or exclamation point. And I always like to require a password to log in. Continue. Now you've got a series of slides that discuss the benefits of Xubuntu and you can simply go through these slides at your leisure while the system is loading. This one here discusses a desktop file manager. Here's the menu. I think this is mugshot that allows you to personalize your computer and I think you got the menu Libre a menu editor and you've got uh, you can customize your desktop Xubuntu is great at customizing if that's what you wish to do as far as the desktop and appearances are concerned and then you've got your applications. Some of them include Gmusic Browser or Abbey Word. And then of course you've got your X Ubuntu support and actually your Ubuntu support because a lot of questions about X Ubuntu can be answered on the Ubuntu site. And then a thank you screen. And that's pretty much it for the slideshow. So what I'm going to do is come back when there's any decisions to be made rather than watching this entire uh, ISO file load the operating system. So finally, after about eight minutes, the installation was considered complete. I'm going to restart it now. After waiting for about two minutes, I'm fine that it will not restart. So I'm going to go up here to the uh, virtual machine. I'm going to see if it will do an ACPI shutdown. It doesn't appear that that's going to work. So I go to machine and I'm going to just basically do a close. And it's going to say save machine state, send the shutdown signal or power off the machine. I'm simply going to say power off the machine. This has always worked in the past. Click OK. So here I have the Xubuntu TT01. The next step is going to be install updates. And before I do that, I'm going to go to storage. And release the ISO file. In earlier versions of uh, VirtualBox, the ISO file wouldn't be released. So I'm just going to double check that. Cancel. Start it back up to install the updates. Here's the login screen on the restart. And so it's set up in a pretty small screen right now, but that's going to be fixed. So click here in the menu. Let's go down here to all settings. and basically come down here where it says software updater. Click on software updater and it checks for updates and it says update software and basically just click install it now and it's going to do two things well actually it's going to download it and then install it I'm going to come back whenever a decision has to be made or when this is complete. 
Now it says the software on this computer is up to date. Click OK. And I can go ahead and close this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do it just to restart. The next step will be to install VirtualBox Guest Editions. Here I am on the restart after installing the updates. Log in. Screen is still small. Once I've logged in, I'm going to go up here to the top left, click on Devices, and insert Guest Edition CD. It says the CD was mounted automatically. There it is. So I'm going to go to Auto Run SH, Execute, and authentication is needed. So you give the password, Authenticate. Now it's installing. And it takes a few minutes to do this. Once guest attention installed, hit enter. I'm going to have to restart again and do a restart. So now you get a bigger screen. I'm going to log in here first. And now you get a full screen. So that's pretty much it for installing Exubuntu 32 bit in VirtualBox. Now, if you want to install the 64 bit version of Exubuntu, just make sure the PAE slash NX choice is unchecked. Thank you.